Hey, what's up folks? I am procrastinating from some other things, so I've been screwing around with TileMaker, and uh, it's I've been having some fun. And I learned a few things along the way that I thought I'd share with you in case you wanted to screw around with TileMaker 2, which I strongly encourage because it's awesome. Now, one thing I noticed, which was slightly alarming when I first saw it, is I pulled up my my main style file I use in most of my projects and I pulled it up with the tile maker output and it's over here on the left and as you can see it's it's a little less wordy than uh, what I'm used to and it took me a little bit to figure that out and what's happening is the base tile style I was using was using name and name underscore en for things like place names and street names and whatnot and uh, that may or may not get made by the output of TileMaker. It looks like people have gravitated toward name colon Latin for labeling, which I was not aware of. And that's really what they, they want you to use. If you look at, say, uh, let's look at this OSM here is, is the open map tiles export. See under transportation name, you get kind of a Rosetta Stone of stuff and if you look at tile maker you get name Latin. Um, so that's something to be aware of the output schema is for the attributes can be a little bit different now this was easy enough to fix i just changed uh, my labeling to use name latin and everything is fine it's something to be aware of Another thing to be aware of is they've changed the current release happened in July and that's version two. And that's what I was using before. When I started messing around with this, I noticed that they've changed their, their open map tiles Lua processing file to uh, be a little different and, and do some stuff with these, these languages. And it's, that actually there the new configuration won't run on version two of uh tile maker it'll come back with error so i started using uh building tile maker from source and i use that with just did that with docker they have a docker file in their repo which is very handy i just did it and tweaked it slightly so i don't have to have the repo it just uh just get Git clones their repo, so I just need a Docker file. I'll, I'll share that code in the blog post that'll be linked under the video. So I'm using the latest version of TileMaker when I'm doing this stuff now. So if I go back and I'm gonna put make the map on the left, the open map tiles export. And you can see now we are, this on the left is open map tiles, on the right is map tiler. We are looking pretty darn good. If there's a problem with features coming across, I, I can't find them. One thing I did find, and it's really the only other place, let's see, where was a good example? Oh, over here. If you look on the left, this is the open map tiles. The points of interest attributes have changed slightly from open map tiles schema to what TileMaker is producing. If you look at this from open map tiles export, you'll see you have a class of parking and a subclass of parking. If you look at that from TileMaker, you'll see you have a class of amenity and a subclass of parking. What's going on there is it's using that class to pull back these icons from the sprite and the the sprite the Attribute change means it can't find the sprite all the time. So here we have these two, but not the parking ones or this one up here for this uh, museum. If I go into the style and change, uh, let's see, change this class attribute to subclass, Save that and go back in. You 
you'll see now we get the parking and that, but not the other two. So there, there's a mismatch between the class and the subclass and, and that's making it not find those icons. So that's something else to be aware of. Uh, I can probably fix that just by adding some entries to the uh, sprite JSON so it knows where to look for those. But it's something else to be aware of. If you notice you're you are using those points of interest, and honestly, I should probably just take those out because, I mean, it's going to be labeling like a subways, and then the, you know, the hot dog stand across the road is going to get all pissed at me. I should probably take these out anyway. But that's the only other thing where I've noticed a difference that that was causing a labeling issue. And again, these are all labeling issues that I've run across. These aren't really feature problems. So it, all in all for, for, you know, converting OSM data to that schema, not bad at all. If that's all that's going wrong, that's pretty good. Now, a couple of other things I did. Two things I do with the open map tiles process is I add in missing buildings from Mecklenburg and I remove the house numbers because eh, I don't care about this. So, to do the buildings, I, I made an extract of just the, a shapefile of just the buildings that are missing from OSM. And bear in mind the OSM license when you're doing this. We release our data under a you know, CC0, so it's fine. But when you're mixing data with OpenStreetMap, you, you, be careful. Make sure your, your license is compatible. So to do that with, uh, to do that with open map tiles was actually a bit tough. I would, I actually made a whole other Docker image that just pulls, uh, like the building footprint. And then I have it throw those into a layer and another Docker image with the open map tiles Postgres. And then I run a SQL command to basically overlay them and get rid of the overlapping ones, and then add them to it to regularly. It's a whole thing. It's actually quite a bit easier in TileMaker. TileMaker, I'll grab the config file, and uh, you'll see some examples in here with some shape files, and I just copied one of those. And I just named it mech building, doesn't matter what you name it. And I gave it min zoom and max zoom, and made it the same as building, and a source, and some simplify stuff that I, I don't even know what that does. And then write to building. And that's all you need to do to spit those polygons straight into that building type. But <laughs> uh, it's going to give it the only attribute it will have is class ocean, which is not what you want. Now, I had to figure out what was going on there. And this feature claw and the other other ones uh, was was kind of the hint. And, but ba basically, if you go to the Lua file, I was like, why is this writing just class ocean? This is this is not what I want, Lua. And let's see if I can find it. Um, ocean, nope, nope, nope. Yep, yeah. yeah, that's it. I noticed this feature class, which is shape file way of saying feature class. Thank you, DBF and your character limitations. Um, it was doing this to return attributes for those shape files that were coming in. And if all else fails, it just said class ocean. And that's where that was coming from. So I just added this right here where I say if attribute feature class equals building, then I would give it the render render height and render min height for, for the I don't know what you are buildings, which is what Mecklenburg's extra buildings are. And that worked perfectly, and all the buildings render, and they pop up a little bit off the ground, and and they're perfect. I did have to go into the shape file and give it a column named feature class, and uh, set them all equal to building. But that's all it took to add the missing buildings to uh, the tile maker output. So that was great. Uh, so that that was easier than open map tiles by by a good a good bit. What was harder than open map tiles was getting rid of a layer. And one of the things I got rid of in open map tiles was is the house number because uh, two reasons: one, don't care; two, if I did care, I, I'd use our our house numbers because I imagine they're a little bit better. So 
what I did to do that is there was just a line in here for house numbers and I just took it out and that did not work. It would give errors when I was trying to build. And this was just some trial and error to figure out what I needed to do to make that go away. And I ended up having to comment out two sections with the house number in it. Uh, this one and this one. And then it would build fine and, and no house numbers. At least I don't think there's house numbers. So it's a little bit harder to remove a stock layer than it is in open map tiles, but adding one seems to be a little bit easier, especially if you're just pulling it straight into uh, an existing output layer. So that's what I got. I'll share some of this code. I also wrote some, like, uh, this little bit of code is, uh, after this, this is just removing some stuff. I'll pull down US South latest from Geofabric, and then I'll clip it out with OSM convert. And then I just run TileMaker, and it's three commands, and I've got tiles. And uh, that is pretty awesome. Anyway, I hope you found that helpful. I will have a link below the video to the blog post, which will have like, maybe I'll throw this code in there so you can see what that looks like and and the, the Docker file I made. And I hope you found that helpful. It's, a, it's really awesome. Other than a couple extraordinarily minor uh, attribute differences that uh, was causing the labeling to spaz a bit. I mean, everything has worked great. Super happy with it. Anyway, I will catch you later. Bye-bye.